Hey gang, welcome to Mini Bites. We are doing the chronological parables of Jesus and we are on number 15. We're going to talk about the friend at midnight. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, we are going to first read in context, starting with verse 1, uh, and talk about what Jesus is talking about in the context and then read the short parable and then read a little bit after it as well, because it's really important that we understand why he told the parable. So Luke chapter 11, beginning with verse one, it says, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. So more than likely, the spokesman of the disciples was Peter. So more than likely, it was Peter who asked it, but it could have been any of the disciples. So one of the disciples asked, Jesus, teach us to pray. They had heard Jesus praying to the Father multiple times throughout Jesus's ministry at this point. This was still early on in Jesus's ministry with the disciples, but even to this point, they saw something different with Jesus in his prayer life, and they wanted in on it. They wanted this special relationship. So they were wanting more than just teach us uh, a formula, though it's possible that's actually what they were asking. They wanted what was special in, in Jesus's relationship with the Father. They wanted what all of the other rabbis taught their disciples, including John the Baptist. Teach us to pray. Give us a formula. Give us whatever it is. Give us the secret of your great relationship with your father. We want to have the same thing. It's very similar to when you're hungry and you see somebody eating something amazing and you want some too. And you're like, could I have some? Could I have a bite of it? And so they were doing the same thing. So in the context of this parable, the friend at midnight, it starts off with them asking Jesus, please teach us to pray. And so then in verse two, he says to them, when you pray, say this. We also have this in Matthew's gospel, and uh, it's, it's usually termed the Lord's prayer, although it probably is better suited to be called the disciples prayer. And in this, this is a much shorter version than in Matthew's gospel. And so this shortened down version says this, verse two, he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread, forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us and lead us not into temptation. So as you can see, it's much shorter than the version that, that most of us probably have memorized and some people in perhaps that you're listening as well in your church, um, maybe you recite it every Sunday. And so it's much longer in Matthew's version. So Luke here just shortens it. And then he goes into the, the parable. So, but to set up the parable, we have to understand that it's about prayer and he gives a, he gives the the parable to not just talk about prayer but specifically to talk about his special relationship that he has with the father remember their request was teach us to pray but but not just teach us to pray their heart and jesus knows this is what they're really asking is teach us to pray like you pray or even better Give us the secrets of your great relationship with the Father. How do you interact with the Father? Give us a way to have a dialogue with the Father as you dialogue with the Father. So then he starts with the parable in verse 5. He says, then he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend. And he goes to him at midnight and says, friend, lend me three loaves of bread because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have nothing to set before him. So to set this up, we have to understand that 
uh, first of all, uh, it was commonplace for people to journey during the night because during the night it was cooler than during the day. Remember, there wasn't uh, Ubers or, or cars or taxis or, or anything like that. So they had to walk by foot. Uh, there was certainly animals and things, but most people uh, traveled by foot. And so it was, it was hot. And so they did most of the journeying by uh, by foot, and it was hot outside during the day. So, so they did. They, they journeyed most of the distance in, in at night. So, <clears throat> it sets this up by uh, around midnight. This friend goes to another friend to ask for bread. So, we get this sense that the one friend comes to the friend to, to this other friend to his house, um, perhaps unexpectedly. And he doesn't have any bread to give him. And in this culture, whenever somebody comes to your house, you have to give him some food. And if you didn't have food, it was more than just inhospitable. It was um, something that uh, would, would give you a bad reputation. It would, it would be um, a slap in the face to anyone who would darken your doorstep, particularly after a long journey to not give him anything to eat. So we get the sense that this friend said, hold on, let me get go get you something to eat. So it would seem that this friend goes to a neighbor who is also his friend and knocks on his door and says, friend, could you get me something to eat? Now, we, we see the word friend here twice. We see here that there's relationship. It's not a stranger. It's not even just a neighbor. We have friendship here. So uh, Jesus, by, by the disciples saying, teach us to pray, they're saying, teach us this relationship that you have with the Father. And so Jesus is setting up that this person has a friendship with the person that he's asking a favor of. Give, give me bread so that I can... I can feed my other friend. There's, there's great need here. There's great need that I feed this other friend of mine. So friend, could I have bread to feed my other friend? I'm asking you because we're friends. So it's important that we understand this context here that he's asking out of friendship. Okay. So friend, lend me three loaves of bread. Verse six. Because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Also, it says at midnight. Um, I think it's important that, that Jesus tells this parable, and he's specifically saying at midnight. Um, why is the time of day important? I believe that midnight also signifies in Scripture that it's in the middle of the night. It's uh, midnight. It, also signifies that it's it's at a time of great need. Um, I, I'm reminded of of Paul and Silas when they're in jail. It was at midnight when they were singing. It was in their greatest need. So here he's talking about this this man who is going to his friend at a time of great need. So this is what this parable is setting up is friendship, relationship, great need, asking for favor, asking for something of great need. Verse seven, then the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you though, Jesus says, he will not get up and give him the bread because he is his friend. Yet, because of the man's boldness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. So, Jesus declares that even though they're friends, he can't get up. He declares, I'm not going to get up. My, my kids are with me in bed. It's midnight. It's late at night. The doors are already locked. We're already in bed. If I get up, it's going to disturb my kids. They're already asleep. This is at an inopportune time. 
This is not the time to come asking for three loaves of bread. This isn't the time. You are asking something that's out of bounds for our friendship, in other words. And so Jesus says he's not going to give bread based on the relationship, but instead based on the man's boldness. If we look at the word boldness in the Greek, the Greek, the Greek word is ananidia. Ananidia comes from two words put together, the, the word a or a ah, and the word um, adios. Adios, so a meaning without and adios meaning shame, without shame. Because of the man's without shame or shamelessness, because the man was without shame or his boldness was without shame, his request was without shame or shameless persistence, persistence, excuse me, shameless persistence. He kept asking because the man kept asking, he kept knocking. He kept requesting. The man already said no, but because he just kept persisting, kept saying, listen, this is a great and dire need. I need these three loaves of bread. There was this uh, un, unembarrassed boldness that this man had. And because of that, not even based on the relationship, but because he was un, unembarrassed, he had no shame. He just kept asking. The man granted his request, came away from his children, or, or um, uh, he, he, he went away and, and uh, uh, risked the possibility of waking up his children, opened up the door, and gave him what the what his friend needed the man got what he requested and that was what he wanted to get across to him so first of all the the disciples asked teach us to pray he gave him gave the disciples a model prayer some some intricate details of these are things to ask for these are things to do in your prayer um father hallowed be your name that that this is about relationship. This is about giving the Father things that are, are due his name. Forgive us of our sins. Um, give us this day our daily bread. Uh, lead us not into temptation. These intricate things that are very important with our relationship to the Father. And then he's talking about go after the Father. Continue to knock. Continue to go after God without shame continue to press in continue to knock continue to go after even if you feel like he's not responding continue 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 that's why he gives this parable then after he gives this parable in verse 9 he says so i say to you he sums it up he he gives a parable and then he says so i said this parable so whenever we see so in scripture it should give us the idea of so what so i say to you ask and it will be given to you now obviously um many of us pray and pray and pray at times for healing and we don't always get what we ask for. Um, somebody dear to um, many of us in uh, our church is part of a, a fellowship of churches called Master Builders. And there was a, a, a dear wife of one of the pastors in our network, um, very young, just died of cancer. And we prayed and we prayed and we prayed for her. Uh, her name was Melissa Medley. And we prayed and we prayed and, and she she just she just passed and uh it's hard to swallow it's hard to understand when when you when you ask and you ask and you press on and you press on 
what does it mean then if you do those things and it and and you unashamedly continue to ask for those loaves of bread and it doesn't seem like those loaves of bread are given but yet she is healed she's in heaven she there's no more pain there's no more cancer and then uh in my own life um my father just passed away last week um found him dead on the floor in his apartment and i had asked that the lord would heal him of his congestive heart failure and his advanced copd and um all of those things and he's gone from this earth but he can breathe and and uh he's completely healed no more pain and he gets to see jesus face to face and uh he ultimately did answer my prayers but not the same way that i would have seemingly be asking for when i'm begging for those loaves of bread we go on i'm going to get back to that for everyone verse 10 who asks receives he who seeks finds and to him who knocks the door is opened verse 11 which of you fathers if your son asks for a fish will give him a snake instead or if he asks for an egg will give him a scorpion if you then though you were evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your father in heaven give the holy spirit to those who ask him ultimately that's how he ends this section do you remember the disciples asking for the holy spirit in this section i don't they asked jesus we dig how you pray teach us to do that also in essence they're saying lord give us this same relationship that you have with the father we want that too he gives this parable of of this this man going to his friend and begging unashamedly for for three loaves of bread so that he could feed another friend this this great need and we go to the father and we beg for needs in our lives whether it's healing or whether it's it's a job or or it's a relationship to be restored or a marriage or whatever it might be or maybe our relationship with the father that that we would have a closer walk with him all of it boils down to whether we see it a certain way or not it boils down to what we need the only way to have that walk with the father as jesus did is for us to be filled with his presence for us to be filled with the holy spirit for us to have what jesus talked about those three loaves jesus is the bread of life for us to be filled with his spirit it really comes down to that whether we're asking for the healing or 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 whatever that need is he fills us full and overflowing with his spirit and all those other things come after that and come in the way that he sees fit for our lives it doesn't mean we shouldn't ask it doesn't mean we shouldn't beg we should do all of those things and he will respond in the way that we need in our lives in the way that he wills what we are to do is to continue to unashamedly go before him go before his throne and to continue to unashamedly un- unabashedly ask him beg him and then he will respond he will give his holy spirit to those who ask he will not give us a fish or a scorpion if we're asking for the holy spirit he will not pull an okie doke on us so if we're wanting to pray if we're wanting that special relationship with him all we have to do is ask and he fills us with his spirit ultimately 
the friend at midnight, the parable of the friend of midnight is about that. It's about this close relationship with the father that Jesus had. And it happens when we're filled with his spirit.